this stuff. Totally natural. Soft water you could really do with a buffer. And that's what we're going to be looking into. Today. Got some bags of other stuff here, but we'll talk about that. In another one of the Monday jobs. Here we go. Up here is the winner of first prize. I'm going to pop it into the uh, veg filter over there. See if anything else happens with it. Hi, and welcome down to Devon Koi Pond. Saturday the 8th, so you'll be watching this on the following Friday. Beautiful down here today. Sun's out, lovely Devon weather. Pond's at over 23 degrees, absolutely gorgeous. Thanks to all of you that entered the competitions. We'll uh, get to that later, the two prize winners. But this week, we're gonna hit uh, pH and uh, that kind of funny subject. How to balance your pH in the pond. What happens if you've got soft water, hard water, and so on like that. But the pH needs to remain stable in the pond, but we'll get into all that. We'll have a quick look at the fish a minute, and then we'll have a sit down and a talk about it. As you can see them all looking happy down here this morning. If they is missing a little bit of water, I'm about uh, two inches down. Did a really good clean on the filters this morning. Popeye's still got Popeye, but uh, it's really hungry and I've seen them up worse than they are at the moment. Just don't know with that one. If anybody's got any uh, recommendations, this is about five years she's suffered with this from time to time, but I don't normally get it in the summer. Don't know what else to do, but she's not off her food and uh, she's acting normal, so that's where that one. But yeah, the fish are happy, all the filters cleaned. But we're gonna be talking on uh, pH. So the pH in your pond. Now, the pH wants to remain stable at approximately seven is a good reading for your pH. Now, it will vary through the day, but uh, anywhere between six and a half and eight and a half on the pH is pretty good. But at any time you can have a pH crash. Now, what you're looking for is something to stabilize that pH. Now, in that respect, I use some uh, stuff here, not chemical, natural um, material, just help stabilize my pH and it works a treat. So what I got here is this stuff. Totally natural. This is crushed oyster shell. Now I usually keep a bag of this. It slowly breaks down in the water and it helps stabilize your pH. Now your pH is also linked to everything else, KH, GH. You can stabilize the pH, it really aids the pond. But you can get a pH crash at any time. The pH goes down overnight if you've got plants in the pond and even the algae, because as the sunlight uh, disappears, plants, algae, all release CO2 back out, back out. So the pH will rise. So as I said, you're looking for somewhere between eight and a half and six. So if you test it first thing in the morning, it should be up a bit. Then by the end of the day, it should be down a bit, but it should mainly read around seven. If you're in a soft water area, you definitely need a stabilizer in there. I'm soft water here and I use the oyster shell as a stabilizer. So let's get you on the tripod again and uh, at the back here and we'll go into it a little bit more.
yellow, good, nitrite, slight tinge of pink, nitrate, little bit high for me, normally it's lower than that, pH, and this was six drops on the pH, or sorry, KH, to get uh, us to that point. So, sort of a zoom in on that a minute, so you can uh, really see the colors. So that's what we ended up with. Ammonia, from the left, nitrite, nitrate, pH, and KH. So all pretty good, but uh, what today's video is going to be on is the buffering of the pH in the pond. How to stop yourself getting a pH crash. I'm on soft water down here as uh, I suspect a majority of people are. If you're on soft water you could really do with a buffer and that's what we're going to be looking into today. Now your pH, as I say you want it to stabilize. Oyster shell in the pond, if it's in the water, will constantly break down and help stabilize the pH by putting the chemicals back in. Now you can get a pH crash at any time, it can just happen just like that. Heavy rain will give you a pH crash. Right. If your pH goes too high, there's another quite natural remedy for it. You can add some uh, white vinegar, that's about a quarter cup per 500 gallons, I think it is. That will slowly bring it down, but do it a little bit at a time. Right, um, KH, uh, you can add um, med clay, will bring your KH up. It didn't affect it when I used it in the pond, but also the oyster shell will also help balance the KH. Okay, but it's very important that you get it at the right level in the pond because it'll throw everything out. So balancing the KH. I'll take you over and show you what I've got in my filters in a minute, where how I keep it in there. I've got a bag like this in the filter. And take my crushed oyster shell. Every so often you just stir the bag around in the filters, but uh, I'll add another bag over into the filters and uh, show you. It uh, kind of just breaks down in the water slowly. I, uh, so, with the crest not doing well, it's time for this to go. So I'm hoping you can see this over uh, here in my filter. Box the last of it. Got some bags of other stuff here, but we'll talk about that. In another one of the Monday jobs. Here's my oyster shell. As you can see. Stir it round a bit. We get uh, it's breaking down very slowly. We'll talk about the other bags here in another video. But I keep that oyster shell 
in there like that to help stabilize the pH now those bags they'll break down and powder up slowly for months I usually swap that bag over I've got a hundred weight of it so I normally tip in uh, like the uh, two liter pot fill up with uh, the broken up bits of it stick that and swap it maybe once a month and uh, that enables me to stabilize my pH You can uh, see by my vortex here how much I need on the refill. Bags of grog here. Bags starting to look a little bit green on the top. Growing some algae on there. The zeolite. Still seeing some of the ammonia, which I seem to be creating a lot of at the moment with the amount of food I'm putting in. And the food's been a little bit of a problem here with the amount. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed I've got a bit of a tinge to the water which I always seem to get down here anyway. We get uh, some really fine organics in the water and uh, even running a bath of water you get a bit of a tinge to it but this is uh, tinges from the food I'm sure of it and uh, that's uh, what those black bags in there I'm hoping they'll uh, bring back a bit. So it's time to lose this one. I'm going to pop it into the uh, veg filter over there. See if anything else happens with it. I'll get rid of my tray here in the corner. Now you can see uh, that I had an air stone there in the corner pushing the water around that. Fantastic, that worked to, got the water out the corner, stirred it a bit there, swap a couple of me uh, bits over here, There, that's better. Better in the corner about that basket there as well, especially seeing as that stuff just wasn't doing anything. But, uh, there it is in the uh, veg. It can stay in there. Another absolutely gorgeous lily flower here. So yeah, the pH, all important factor in the pond. There are the oyster shells, another good tip like the zeolite. Keep the oyster shell in there, it will help stabilize your pH, which helps stabilize everything else. pH swings high, low, will do the pond no good favors whatsoever. Your fish get stressed, they get stressed, then you end up with ammonia, nitrite, nitrate problems all the way through the lot. So, you saw the black bags that I had in the filter. They're another little trick that I'll go into when I get to that filter on the Monday night uh, videos, but I've got tannins in my water here through the mains. It's always got that slight tinge of yellow to it. Run a white bath full, you get a tinge on the water. 
But with the organics in the pond as well, i.e. the plants, the sheer amount of food I've been putting in, it's actually put a proper yellow tinge on the water. It doesn't show so much when the sun's not on it, but when the sun's out on it, you can really see it. So, oyster shell as a buffer for your pH, fantastic thing, okay? pH can go haywire with heavy rain. If you're uncovered on the pond, that can send it haywire. The oyster shell will help stabilize all that. Overnight, if you've got plants, the CO2 released back into the water will uh, affect the pH. It will read different in the morning to in the evening. So to get your pH range, really you want to test in the morning and then in the evening. Okay, just to see what the range of your pH is. And it wants to average around seven most of the time. Anything other than that, too acid or too alkaline, and it's stressing your fish. Right, we should bring on all sorts of other things, problems, um, including a lot of problems with healing on the fish as well. If it's too acid, too alkaline, they struggle to heal the wounds and things like that. It has to be right to keep your fish happy. And the big job is looking after your fish, with the main job being looking after the water. So, over to the competition last week. Thanks to those that subscribed in, fantastic. The huge response to the competition. So, here we go. Up here is the winner of first prize, okay? This person here won the uh, first prize. I'll add this into the video later in the week. Now if you uh, get hold of me on the channel page, you'll find my email address. And the second prize winner is here. Congratulations to you too. Fantastic, as I say, on the channel page, in the about, you'll find my email address. If you contact me by email, get me your address, I'll get uh, those prizes in the post and off to you. Sorry to all of those of you that didn't win, but um, I do run regular competitions. I've got some more of those plaques. I will be uh, making some more again and uh, giving them out as prizes as we go along. There'll probably be another couple of prize jewels like this before the end of the summer season. So if you haven't subscribed in yet, hit the subscription button down here. Ding the bell if you haven't and you're subscribed and you still haven't dinged that bell, hit the bell. Then you'll know when I've got a video out and you won't miss another competition. But it was great to have you all enter, a huge number of entries, most I've ever read for a competition. But there has to be some winners and losers, and two of you were lucky this time. So, from down here in Devon, it's getting a bit hot and sweaty rollocks down here now. So, I'm going to pour myself a nice cold beer, put the brolly up on the top patio, sit up there, and watch the fish for a bit. Put my feet up, get ready for opening a bottle of wine this evening as well. So, happy ponding to you. Remember guys, look after your water. I'll see you next week.